This video is going to begin the topic of an overview of the earliest animals. And a difficulty that I have is that there are two ways that this could be presented. One is kind of chronologically. And so at a certain moment in time, say 600 million years ago, talk about the various things which were alive at that point. Or another way would be to uh, treat them as biological groups and first talk about, say, sponges and say everything about sponges and then cnidarians and corals and jellyfish. And so um, what I typically do is then attempt to do both because they have different emphases, um, but I think they're both a valid focus. So what I'd like to do in this video is focus on more the chronological aspect of the earliest animals. And then in, in the following video, um, focus now going by, by, uh, by each biological group. So um, there is uh, a Cambrian period in the Paleozoic era. This is the first period of the Paleozoic era. And if we were to represent the animals of the Cambrian period, such as those of the Burgess Shale, um, which are uh, depicted here, uh, one of the things which is noteworthy is that there's a lot of complexity here. I mean, there are actual arthropods, which, you know, exoskeletons, compound eyes, and segmented limbs. Um, there are diverse classes of worms, including higher worms, segmented uh, worms, and the like. You know, there are sponges, there are uh, cnidarians, um, and for a long time, these were the earliest fossils of animals which were known. And so it seemed that uh, throughout the Precambrian, there were no animals, no animals, no animals. And then all of a sudden in the Cambrian period, there were these animals, you know, diversity, complexity. And so then it was um, a term which was coined was that of a Cambrian explosion. Now, there certainly was a Cambrian explosion. Cambrian is a time in which animal diversity and complexity greatly increased. We now know um, it was certainly gradual in that the uh, early Cambrian did not have all of these organisms. And then over tens of millions of years, many of these lineages evolved. By the end of the Cambrian, there were four, far more. And then as the Cambrian transitioned into the Ordovician, the next period, there was another big wave of um, another big wave of uh, biodiversification. Um, and so uh, the Cambrian explosion is real. Life did get uh, much more complex and uh, much more diverse in a short period of time, but it was not instantaneous. It was an instantaneous explosion. So there were no animals and all of a sudden there were all these complex animals, um, but rather taking tens and tens of millions of years. But what I'd like to focus, focus on uh, first is um, well, what came before the Precambrian? Uh, uh, what came before the Cambrian period? Well, uh, to return to a uh, the geologic time scale, um, the Earth is rather old, 4.6 billion years old, as old as the rest of the solar system. And most of the history of the planet can be lumped into this general Precambrian, everything that occurred before the Cambrian. So once again, if uh, the last 540 million years were split into eras, Cenozoic, Mesozoic, and Paleozoic. The beginning of the Paleozoic was the Cambrian period, starting around 542, 541 um, million uh, years ago. And once again, if you look, there's this great diversification of, of animals in the Cambrian, including the earliest uh, fish, which we'll get back to, but you'll see here in a second. Um, where did they come from? What happened before? Well, the, the Precambrian existed, you know, prior to the Cambrian. Uh, Earth's history is right is rather long, and there is now a period uh, which is named prior. Here's those early fish, uh, which are known from uh, the early Cambrian. Um, there is a period known as the Ediacaran period. Um, it may uh, it's time interval may be adjusted as further discoveries are made, but last I checked, 630 million years ago is when it began. And so if we were to consider then the history of uh, the planet, uh, there was the Hadean uh, eon, uh, a portion of the Precambrian uh, from 4.6 to 4 billion years ago, the Archean uh, eon, 
um, as, uh, sometimes formally called the Archeozoic, from 4.0 to 2.5 billion years ago. It was right around the end of this time that the cyanobacteria started adding ox uh, oxygen to the air, and then so, you know, iron started to come out of um, being dissolved in the ocean and form those great red beds. And then the Proterozoic, uh, was certainly uh, significant because while the only living things known in the Archaean are bacteria, um, shortly after oxygen was added to the atmosphere in the Proterozoic, there were eukaryotes. Um, so the Proterozoic lasts from 2.5 uh, billion years ago uh, to about half a billion years ago. It, uh, the Proterozoic ends when the Cambrian uh, begins. And we could split the Proterozoic into sections, including the final section of it, the Neoproterozoic. This Neo, uh, Neoproterozoic um, of you know, about 500 million years could then have been split into three uh, uh, periods. Uh, the Tonian period, uh, and during uh, this uh, period, eukaryotic fossils were becoming uh, common, including a diverse assemblage known as acrotarchs. Um, and then even things like amoeba and paramecia uh, were uh, known. Um, and then was the cryogenian uh, uh, period. Uh, the cryogenian uh, period uh, was the time of snowball Earth. So it seems that the oxygen which was put into the air by the photosynthesis of the blue-green algae had consequences for uh, the planet. That not only was there an ice age, but an ice age which was so severe that much of the oceans froze, maybe all of the oceans froze. And so that life on Earth, you know, just in general was threatened by this, you know, the most frigid time in the history of the planet as far as we can uh, tell. Now there would have been a couple of glaciations with a warm period in uh, between. Fossils become less uh, common. The oceans seem to have changed uh, their uh, state as evidenced by the minerals uh, form. They became anoxic as one might expect if they were covered by uh, ice. So that certainly would have been uh, significant. Um, and so the cryogenian uh, period was uh, certainly uh, severe. Some feel that there may have been animal fossils found from them, including proto-sponges. I'll get back to that. And then um, and there's a period following uh, that known as the Ediacaran uh, period. Now, the Ediacaran period was named for the animals that I'll describe in this video, known as the Ediacaran uh, animals. So one of the things I'd like to say is significant is the Cambrian explosion was by some thought to mean that life appeared from nowhere, that it just, or animal life, that there were no animals, and then all of a sudden there was these diverse animals that had appeared from nowhere. Um, we now know uh, that that is uh, false, that in this Ediacaran period, there were certainly uh, animals, as I'll describe in this video. Uh, there are apparently uh, sponges. Uh, there are certainly cnidarians, jellyfish and coral relatives. There are worms. And then there's a number of animals which we don't know what they are because they're so different from the ones today. And possibly then even um, higher animals, you know, relatives of uh, arthropods, mollusks, uh, echinoderms, and perhaps chordates by the end of this. Um, so the Ediacaran period definitely has animals, and some have argued that uh, certain uh, fossils could be interpreted as, as animals going back to the cryogenian or even the Tonian period. So first big point is, before the Cambrian period, which is the first period in the Phanerozoic eon, before the Cambrian, there were animals. So the Cambrian explosion is an explosion of sorts, but it's not that animals appear from nowhere suddenly. Animals have tens of millions of years. So for example, if you were to just to take the Ediacaran um, uh, period, this period of, you know, we, once again, there's you know uh, some adjustment as we study the fossil for when actually it begins. Um, but this length of time, is certainly more than the Cenozoic era. So 
there is more than 65 million years in the Ediacaran period. 65 million years ago, there were dinosaurs out, you know, uh, in the land wherever you are. And so um, 65 million years for mammals have, quite, have been quite significant. In 65 million years, mammals have gone from some generalized forms to produce um, uh, whales in the ocean and bats in the air, uh, rhinos and cats and dogs and bears and primates, including ourselves. So 65 million years is quite a long time. And animals can diversify significantly in 65 million years. Um, mammals are uh, an evidence of that. This Ediacaran period had animals. Um, uh, prior to the Cambrian period for longer than 65 million years. And so, you know, just to emphasize, you know, how much diversification can occur in 65 million years, the early animals had that time and more. And some have argued that they have found evidence of, of very simple soft-bodied animals going back prior to uh, the Ediacaran uh, period. Um, these Ediacaran um, animals uh, were significant, once again, a period was named for them. Now, the Ediacaran period uh, was, I believe it was 2004, where it was named. That was the first new period in the geologic scale in almost a century. So the um, early geologists of the 1800s, early 1900s, they had named periods like the Jurassic, the Cretaceous, the Cambrian, the Ordovician, and that was it. So the periods of the geologic time scale were kind of set, um, but it was because of these early animals that a new period, the Ediacaran period, was named. So once again, um, these Ediacaran animals are significant enough that for them, a new um, a period, uh, was named in the uh, in the geologic time period, the first in uh, a century. Now, let me just uh, once again, I'm going to jump around uh, a little bit and then get back to um, some of these. So, the Ediacaran um, animals were first discovered in the Ediacaran Hills uh, in uh, Australia, uh, and so uh, it's now known that they. Uh, are known from uh, sites all over the world, so they weren't just specific to uh, Australia. And for a long time, they weren't well studied because um, they were small and soft-bodied. And so what does one make of an impression that looks like this? Uh, there doesn't seem to be a, a mouth, a front, a back a top, uh, a bottom. There doesn't seem to be organs of any times. There are certainly no limbs. And so, um, you know, these uh, uh, organisms were small, soft-bodied, and rather simple. And so for a long time, they went, um, you know, understudied. Uh, but obviously, if we're going to talk about animals, animals have to start somewhere. And the beginnings of animals would undoubtedly be simple. And so uh, these then uh, become uh, significant. So um, I have a, a playlist uh, which goes uh, through the animals uh, known from uh, the Ediacaran period. The way I, I, I teach it from my students, it's kind of a sillier activity where they listen to you know dinosaur reporters going back to the uh, the Ediacaran uh, uh, period, and they record what uh, is said. So let me just quickly summarize. Um, I find that you know this you know, lightens the mood in in the class. Um, but uh, so one of the the points you know I make is I talk first about that uh, cryogenian uh, period uh, where uh, the Earth is to a large degree frozen, and once again it was because after oxygen was added to the atmosphere. Um, the methane, uh, which absorbs a lot of heat in the Earth's atmosphere, was replaced by carbon dioxide, which absorbs heat, but not as much. And so in general, then, this allowed the planet uh, to uh, cool. Um, now, obviously, life had existed prior to the, uh, you know, the Ediacaran period, and there were eukaryotes. Eukaryotes included algae. You know, and algae, I mean, they can get to be complex. Brown algae can be over 100 feet long. So there was certainly multicellular life 
prior to um, the Ediacaran period, um, but no clear fossils of animals. There have been uh, some, uh, once again, published reports of, you know, uh, I think this is evidence of animals before the Ediacaran period, um, but because they're small, soft-bodied, and you could debate on the stratigraphy, because there weren't a lot of big, uh, obvious fossils, uh, dating becomes a little more difficult. Uh, one, you know, uh, uh, these uh, are not universally uh, accepted. So by the um, Ediacaran period, or the precursor, or the time just prior to it, animals are definitely known. So the Ediacaran period is the first you know, time in Earth's history where there are undisputed fossils of animals. Now, prior to that, once again, there are some traces of fossils, including what some have argued are sponges. Um, I'm going to talk about that with sponges in the next video. Um, some have argued that because, once again, if you're finding, you know, these small, soft-bodied things, uh, how does one interpret that? They're certainly not modern sponges. And so one could say, I think the small, soft-bodied thing is a primitive sponge. Others could have a different interpretation. And so if there is life of animal, animal life prior to the Ediacaran period, then um, the papers which have been published um, claim that you know, uh, these seem to be sponges. Now that would certainly make sense because sponges are the simplest animals alive today. And thus it makes sense that they would be the first animals. And so uh, the narrative that the simplest animals, the sponges, are actually the first known in the fossil record, actually even a little before the Ediacaran period. Um, that certainly makes sense. Um, but once again, you know, uh, there is constant reevaluation, and uh, there uh, are some, as I will mention, who say, you know, some of those published reports of early sponges, we're reinterpreting those fossils. We don't think they were sponges. We think sponges come a little later. So just to mention that. In the Ediacaran period, there are definite fossils of cnidarians. Cnidarians are the group of animals today, which include uh, jellyfish, sea fans and sea pens, uh, corals, hydra, which are near uh, microscopic. Um, and they are significant because while they are simple, they don't have organs, they don't have a brain. Um, Nevertheless, they do have tissues, so they're more complex than sponges. Uh, and that means that they have nervous tissue and muscle tissue. They can actually move. So uh, while they are simpler than, say, worms, they are more complex than uh, sponges. And we certainly have cnidarians today. But during the Ediacaran period, cnidarians are the most common animals on the planet Earth. They are the most uh, diverse animals on uh, the planet uh, Earth. And so for this time period, uh, you know, 630 million years ago to 540, um, certainly the beginning part of the Ediacaran period, this seems to be, you know, their heyday, if you will. You know, they are the, you know, the dominant animals uh, on uh, Earth. Now, not only is that exciting, you know, because cnidarians are important and we can talk about that. Um, if we're going to trace the uh, evolution of animals in general, um, animals develop complexity over time. And this means that 65 million years before the Cambrian period, there are animals, there are animals with tissues, there are animals with muscle that can move, there are animals with nervous systems to command the muscle, um, et cetera. And so, uh, once again, 65 million years is a really long time. And the Cambrian animals, they don't appear from nowhere. These cnidarians and their relatives, they had tens of millions of years prior to the Cambrian period uh, to uh, elaborate uh, you know, their body plans. And so cnidarians are known from the, um, uh, from the Ediacaran period. Later in the Ediacaran period, there are worm trails. Now, there are a bunch of animals which seem to be worm-like, but we could actually argue, like Dickinsonia. You know, what the heck is Dickinsonia? I'll show you an image uh, presently. Some have interpreted it as a worm, um, but others uh, have uh, other, you know, thoughts uh, on it. Um, but worms uh, are certainly a, uh, you know, a big advance because worms are bilaterally symmetrical. Um, 
And so therefore they have a head rather than you know, drift this way and that way, the way a jellyfish might. You know, a worm is always going in one direction at the same, uh, you know, it's always going in one direction. So there's always a front end um, and that front end then accumulates uh, neural tissue, you know, taste receptors, smell receptors, et cetera. So it becomes a, uh, a head. And so that's significant that there are these, you know, worm-like animals. Now, many worms today are, are simple. They're still microscopic worms. Some worms today have a, an incomplete digestive system where this same opening serves as both the mouth and the anus. So food comes in, it's digested, and waste is excreted. So this flatworm, for example, the mouth is not at the head end. It's in the middle, all right, of uh, these planaria. Um, and the same opening is serving as both the uh, mouth and the anus. Uh, so there are worms which vary in their complexity, but these worms are more complex than, say, jellyfish would be. You know, they're always moving in, this, in the same direction. They have a head end, you know, that is their, um, uh, that is their front. Um, and so uh, worms existed by the end of the Ediacaran uh, period. And there are even what seem to be, you know, uh, worm burrows uh, with fecal pellets, which some of them have interpreted as not only worms, uh, but then a higher order of uh, worms, which has a complete digestive tract. So once again, there are worms today where there's a centrally located mouth, which serves as both the uh, mouth and uh, the anus. Um, but uh, a more advanced state for worms is to have a complete digestive tract with a mouth at the head end and a long intestine. And fecal pellets inside a worm burrow seem to be suggestive of that. At the very end of the Ediacaran uh, period, there seem to be even more complex animals, which I'll return to in a second. But some are worms which have shells around themselves. Right? And so a lot of animals have hard exoskeletons like arthropods, and some make shells around themselves like mollusks. Um, and there seem to be worms uh, which had uh, shells. And the reason seems to be that there were predators, because some of these shells actually had um, uh, marks of uh, predation uh, on them. So before I get to the final uh, group, uh, just to review that... Uh, there are these Ediacaran animals known from the Ediacaran period. Uh, what can we say of them? They are certainly not modern animals. There are zero fish. Uh, there are zero arthropods. There are zero mollusks. There are zero coral reefs, etc. And when we look at these animals, they seem to be small, soft-bodied, and rather uh, simple. Uh, they don't, the majority of them don't seem to have tops or bottoms, fronts or backs, heads or tails, organ systems, etc. So the Ediacaran period is a period where there are animals, but as, you know, predicted, they're not complex animals. They are not modern animals. They're small, simple uh, kinds, which are therefore difficult to uh, interpret. Now, some have said, you know, I interpret this as a sponge. Um, others have, you know, uh, said, uh, I think that instead of being a sponge, that was a hold fast, like a place of attachment of, you know, say a cnidarian. Uh, and so once again, there can be some disagreement on how to classify uh, fossils, clearly a primitive animal. Some have said, I, I think this is a sponge spicule. You know, others have said, you know, I, I don't think that's a sponge spicule. I think there's another interpretation of it. So sponges, some have said, you know, these are sponges from the Ediacaran period. Um, others have said, I'm not, you know, positive on the classification of those. Um, there were certainly cnidarians. There were soft-bodied jellyfish-like animals uh, which lived in the Ediacaran period. And once again, that's significant because uh, cnidarians, they have tissues, they have muscle, they have nervous systems. So animals, you know, uh, you know, with these complex features have certainly existed by this point. These Ediacaran animals are not corals, but they do seem to be a bit coral-like. And so it was interpreted that this seems to have a chamber for endosymbionts, the way that you know corals do to help them with photosynthesis. Um, and this was interpreted to have similar, you know, um, 
chambers like the tabulate corals, which would come later. So uh, uh, cnidarians include corals, um, and uh, there are some fossils which seem which have been interpreted to be coral-like. The cnidarians include sea fans and sea pens, and there are certainly um, primitive animals which seem to be um, as sea, uh, like sea fans and, and sea pens uh, known from the Ediacaran uh, period. Um, this one actually then seems to have you know, some degree of segmentation, uh, which uh, is simple. So once again, the Nidarians, they seem to do rather well, that this seems to be the time in Earth's history where they are the most abundant animals, the most diverse animals. So you know, the age of Nidarians, perhaps certainly for the early Ediacaran. But then there are more. So on this cover of Nature, um, there are um, embryos of animals, uh, which are not only animal embryos, but they seem to be more uh, complex. Um, and even then going back to those acrotarchs, um, acrotarchs are these microscopic fossils. Uh, but you know, there's a whole, there's a lot of diversity in them. Some of them could be animal embryos. So just because they're acrotarchs doesn't mean they're and they're put together in this grab bag group doesn't mean that they're related to each other. So some could be you know you know algae like red algae, green algae. Some could be you know these protist groups. Some might be fungi. Some might be animal embryos. So it could be like a grab bag um, a term. And certainly there are. Uh, a diversity of worms. Now, Dickinsonia is a famous Precambrian animal. It certainly looks like a segmented worm. That would be a big deal because not only are these worms, but these are more advanced worms, these segmented worms. Some of these could be three feet long or even almost six feet long, but still be rather flat. So some of these could be like as flat, more or less, as cardboard, or maybe even, well, cardboard probably more than poster board, but perhaps somewhere in between. So these were large and flat. Now, one could then tie this into worms because there are flat worms, they are simple uh, worms. And certainly if you don't have a cardiovascular system, a respiratory system, a urinary system, you might ask, well, how could you be an animal without those systems? One of the ways is, well, you could be flat. And if most of your cells are touching the ocean, then you don't need a circulatory system to distribute materials. You could then uh, get by, uh, you know, by diffusion. So being flat and increasing your surface area would be a way that primitive animals could have existed without the complex systems, which would appear later. Now, um, it's not positive that these are worms. There's a lot of disagreement over what. Um, uh, Dickinsonia uh, is. And another possibility is, you know, we like to put these fossil animals in groups which are alive today, so they're worms. But it's also then possible that the Ediacaran just had groups of organisms, you know, which are, are now extinct, you know, and, and that did not have any modern representatives because they, they could simply just be then different. Um, we know that there are worms because there are, in addition to worm fossils, there are worm burrows, some with fecal pellets, uh, which would uh, then uh, suggest that they then had those complete digestive uh, uh, systems. Um, now, I, I've even then uh, read publications where there were larger uh, fossils uh, known. Now, they were, you know, soft-bodied and therefore not a whole lot of uh, detail uh, known, um, but uh, this one uh, was uh, more than uh, 10 uh, feet uh, long, as was this one. Uh, and so uh, there were these soft-bodied animals, very often flat uh, along uh, the, the uh, seafloor during the Ediacaran period. And this then included some worms, you know, diverse worms. And some of these worms, like Claudina, actually made shells around uh, themselves uh, for uh, protection. Now, these are known by the very end of the Ediacaran period. So uh, not only does the Ediacaran have simple animals, but the animals seem to get more complex over time. And the end of the Ediacaran has more complexity than uh, the beginning of the Ediac. Well, let me just show you a few images and then we'll get back to, um, to the videos which make the same point. Okay, so uh, there are 
animals in the Ediacaran period, and perhaps sponges, which are the most primitive animals today. There are cnidarians, which is the next most uh, complex group of animals with nervous system and muscle. Uh, so they are represented in the Ediacaran period. This is actually the point where they are the most diverse. There are worms. That's the next group. There are, so there are certainly worms and different kinds of worms. The complexity of worms increases over time, with some even being shelled by the end. Um, is there anything else? So by the end, so in the Ediacaran period, um, is there anything that's more complex than, say, a worm, even though, you know, worms can be complex? Uh, and the answer is, it seems so. And it seems so because, one, these embryos um, not only show that there were animals in the uh, pre-Cambrian, um, but then actually uh, these, if these embryos uh, were reported to have some features of the way that mollusk embryos uh, di uh, uh, divide. And this uh, organism uh, here um, seems to have some molluscan uh, features. So Kimberella uh, here um, is not a mollusk. It, it's not, you can't say, oh, that's a, a snail, that's an octopus, that's a, a clam, um, but it does have some molluscan uh, features, it would seem. And so perhaps it's somewhere between these simpler Ediacaran animals and a mollusk. <clears throat> this uh, animal has been linked to perhaps segmented worms or perhaps you know having a head-like structure like some of the arthropods. Is it definitely I'd say an arthropod? No, it is not, but it seems to have you know some more complex uh, features. And as you'll see, there are other animals. These are not arthropods, but they're not clearly worms either. They seem to have some of the features of arthropods. These are not echinoderms, uh, but they certainly seem to have some of the features of the, um, the uh, echinoderms. So going back to here, when you get to the very end of the Ediacaran period, so if the Ediacaran period is going to end 542 million years ago when the Cambrian period begins. If you look at, say, the last 10 million years, um, Ediacaran animals become more complex during that period. There are animals which are clearly more complex than they were at the beginning. And um, they don't seem to be arthropods, but they do have some of the features of arthropods. They don't seem to be mollusks, but some may have some of the features of mollusks, etc. And so if animal complexity evolves in stages, then one would expect before the complex animals of the Cambrian, which include true mollusks and true arthropods and true echinoderms, that one would find animals which had some but not all of the features of the mollusks, the arthropods, the echinoderms. And that is exactly what the very end of the Ediacaran then uh, includes. Here we have animals which were more complex than you know simple uh, worms, but not as complex as arthropods, mollusks, and echinoderms, and they seem to have some, but not all, of um, of the features of these higher uh, groups. So here's you know Ediacaran animals that seem to have a symmetry based on five, like uh, edi uh, like uh, echinoderms uh, uh, do. Okay, and so. Um, the Cambrian period is certainly a time when animal life has an explosion of sorts, all right? So there is certainly a great increase in uh, animal uh, diversity and animal uh, complexity, okay? Um, so the following illustrations depict, uh, uh, you know, animals found in Cambrian uh, strata. Um, so, uh, there is certainly an increase. It should be noted that this Cambrian explosion doesn't you know, turn on like a light switch the minute the Cambrian begins. So early Cambrian fossils look like this. Tens of millions of years later, Cambrian fossils look like this and like this. And so there is an increase um, in complexity starting in the early Cambrian then to the later Cambrian. So it's not as if you know, a a complex animals appear all at once. Um, uh, but then one could ask, where did these Cambrian animals come from? Well, 
they had ancestors for tens of millions of years prior. So for well over 65 million years prior to the Cambrian, there were these Ediacaran animals, which had a planet and tens of millions of years and increased in their complexity over that time. So from a time where there were perhaps sponges and certainly cnidarians, you know, then later there come worms. And then by the end, there are higher forms, which seem to be transitional fossils uh, to some of the uh, later groups. Um, by the time we get to the Cambrian, there are difference, definite sponges, including diverse uh, groups. Uh, there is a great diversity of animals, some of which are not uh, uh, present uh, today, um, but there are definite arthropods, definite um, chordates, uh, preopulid worms. There are segmented uh, worms. There are uh, animals uh, which seem related to arthropods and definite arthropods. And so Cambrian life is a certainly a very uh, complex. Now, one last thing I'd like to, to stress is that the Cambrian seems to have been different. And one of the big differences in the Cambrian and also then in the Ediacaran is that there were not yet animals which could burrow a lot, or at least not an abundance of them. And because of that, what seems to have existed is mats of microbes on the seafloor. So it seems like there were these mats of, of just bacteria and blue-green algae, et cetera, um, which kind of formed over the sediment. Now, this was significant because this mat of microbes would then create like an oxygen-free area beneath it where animals are more likely, are more uh, easily preserved. So soft-bodied animals are preserved in these um, uh, in uh, these uh, fossil beds uh, to a better uh, extent than um, and then would occur later. So later in typical fossil beds, uh, there are just the uh, because there are animals which are disturbing the sediment. You know they burrow. Uh, it's hard to get. Uh, fossils of everything, and certainly you don't tend to get fossils of the soft-bodied animals. But in the Ediacaran and then in the Cambrian, it was different apparently. There wasn't a great deal of uh, mixing up of the sediment, and so when animals died, they could be buried in these microbial mats and preserved really well. So therefore, um, when we look at these Cambrian fossils, many of them are not just fossil beds, they are really good fossil beds. Geologists have a term lagerstatten for not just a, a fossil bed, a really good one. And the reason that so many Cambrian fossils are lagerstatten that are really good is because apparently when animals died, even soft-bodied ones, they could be preserved by these microbial mats um, and there weren't animals burrowing all through disturbing the sediments. So we have more complete representation of all of the animals of um, certain ecosystems in the uh, Cambrian period than we do typically. So if, if you ask what animals were alive in the Cambrian period, um, well, there's you know fossils of jellyfish and cnidarians, which are rare afterwards because it's just so uh, hard to preserve these soft-bodied animals. Um, and so I'll go through in the uh, subsequent videos all of the diverse um, fossils of the Cambrian, but there are just excellent fossil beds like these videos here are about the Cambrian fossils of the Burgess Shale. So there's a Burgess or Burgess uh, Shale off the, uh, the coast, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, in Canada, um, which has just exceptional preservation of Cambrian animals, so much so that we can reconstruct the entire ecosystem because it's thought that we have um, the soft-bodied animals, while many uh, fossil beds only include uh, the hard-bodied animals. And you can say, you know, here we're representing everything that's um, present. And that's significant because some people have been of the opinion that there have, say, always been, you know, the bony fish alive today. Well, there's no evidence of that. And certainly great fossil beds, the Lagerstatten, you do get the sense that you're preserving everything, that the uh, preservational aspects were just excellent. 
And because of that, you have great confidence that you have a good representation of all the organisms which were present. And so therefore, if there are zero bony fish, zero modern corals, zero modern arthropods, um, then uh, one certainly gets the idea that life's diversity have, uh, has uh, increased uh, gradually over time, and that the organisms which we have today have not always been uh, present. And so there are, uh, you know, all of these publications, and I've referenced them elsewhere, where you can look at the scientific papers, which will, you know, talk about, you know, these Cambrian uh, fossils in uh, Siberia, these Cambrian fossils in uh, China, these Cambrian fossils in Pennsylvania, these in Spain these in France, these in Uruguay, uh, these in uh, China at a different um, site, uh, these, uh, the Burgess Shale in uh, Canada, um, et cetera. Um, and then one uh, can, you know, study what was alive in the Cambrian, and it certainly was not the, the modern seafloor with modern fish, modern arthropods, and mollusks, uh, et, et cetera. Uh, and so um, uh, uh, the Ediacaran period is the, uh, has the first clear um, uh, fossils of animals, even though animals might have originated a little before that. Um, and great diversification of animals occurred in the Ediacaran period to the point where these Ediacaran animals are then the ancestors of the animals which appear in the uh, in the Cambrian explosion, but animal diversification it's gradual. So the animals of the early Ediacaran are uh, less diverse and complex than the animals of the end of the Ediacaran. The animals of the early Cambrian are more complex, but then the animals of the mid Cambrian far more. Uh, complex, and then animal complexity increases even more throughout the Cambrian and as the Ordovician uh, begins. And so this has been kind of a chronological look at uh, animals. And the next video will kind of focus in on these animals uh, group by group.